Okay. Thank you. Okay, so welcome to my talk about SUSE Package Hub. I'm Wolfgang Engel. I'm working for SUSE Linux. And today I want to introduce you to open source packages for enterprise. But first I want to introduce you to Bob. That's Bob. Bob is an enterprise user. So he's basically using SUSE Linux Enterprise Server 12, for example. As you can see here, the amount of packages is somehow quite limited. And bot, uh, bot, <laughs> Bob figured out, okay, there are more packages. There's more software than that is already on Slash. So he's, he sees um, the potential of the open source packages that are available. And he was thinking, okay, I want to use, for example, Tmux. So he looked or he searched on, on Slash and he couldn't find it. So he was searching for Tmux. So this is just an example. You can take any other package. So what he did is basically he went on software open SUSE org because he was lucky enough to find packages that are built for slash 12. But when he clicked on the show unstable packages, he got this message, which is like for an enterprise customer is like, mm, it's, I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure if I really want to install this package because the message is just telling me mm, probably not a good idea. Because what Bob is looking for is this. So everyone who is using Slash, is, are there any using Slash? One, two, three. Hey, more than I thought. The others are OpenSUSE? Good. So, this is basically if you go to Yast and then you get all the modules and the extensions listed available to your system. Okay, and um, here is for example also uh, SUSE package hub, but I will come to that later. So, this is basically the view the enterprise customer has and expects because there is no other source of packages, basically. So what is Package Hub? Um, before I dive into Package Hub, I want to show you a diagram. This shows the amount of packages in several distributions. So on the left, you have slash 12. This is around like between, I don't know, something, a rough, this is just a rough guess, around 3,000 packages. Then in the middle you have OpenSUSE Leap, which is around 9,000 packages. And then you have Factory, which is like above 11,000 packages. So if you're on Slash, you don't have that the huge variety you have and with Leap, for example, you are um, you can only use the packages that are available either on Slash or if you're brave enough, you can just use packages that are in the open build service. But this is for the customer hard to differentiate if this package is stable or not, or if it's a development package or whatever. So um, what we are trying to achieve with Package Hub is to somehow fill the gap. So you have all the open source packages on Leap, which is in the middle, and we are trying to bring these open source packages to Slash, ready to use for the customer from one source. And the source is you saw in slides before from the SUSE customer center. 
The current status is that we have on SLES like 860 packages in Package Hub ready for SLES. So you see that we are a little bit far away from the goal to get every package in from OpenSUSE, but at least we are on the way. So, um, package, where does the package come from for Package Hub? So it all begins in the OBS. So we are trying to use the same source as you have on OpenSUSE. So OBS is really great for like packages, maintainers, and for the community. And it has a lot of packages all already built also for SLES 12. But the problem here is, I already mentioned, is that for the customer view, it's hard to find out which package is the best for SLES. So that's something we want to change, actually. So SUSE Package Hub is also a project in the build service where we collect basically or adapt the packages from OpenSUSE. And um, we put some, um, some uh, policies to it to make it easier for the customer to see that basically, okay, when the package comes from Package Hub, I can use that package. And there is no indicator that this is an unstable package. I mean, if the package is in Package Hub, it should, in theory, it should work. I mean, it also can be broken, but that's a different topic. So what we are trying to do is, um, we are trying to follow also like policies you already have for, let's say, if you want to have a package in factory. Because every package in Package Hub needs to be, needs to go through factory and then go to package up. So there's a kind of process of reviewing. So that's one big plus. Then we also have checks to make sure that the package in package up does not collide with other packages on SLES. That means that, for example, if you install a package from a different source, which you already installed or which is on SLES, and it and it updates a package, a base package, for example, then you're probably in some trouble because then you can't be sure that this system you're running is still supportable. So um, we want to make sure that the packages that's coming from Package Hub are somehow verified that the supportability for your enterprise server is still there and still valid. But I also have to say this is a somehow a community project, so it's maintained by the community and there's no support from SUSE in first place. So that means you can't call basically support for help if you have trouble with packages from Package Hub. But there are a lot of other good sources like you can use OpenSUSE forums, mailing lists, and we are trying to build up like portals to um, direct the customers and even that other customers help other customers if there are some problems and you always always can file a bug. Um, so we want to provide an easy access for the customer to basically um, access the additional open source software. Um, okay, I already mentioned the uh, the policies. Um, it's also very important to mention that basically every package um, should get also security fixes. And every version is still available in Package Hub. So that basically it's, it's somehow layered. That means that if you want to install a, spe a specific version of a package, it stays there, which is can be also great for um, dependencies. 
One big thing that we have to probably discuss in, in, in a bigger round is like the, the support from the community in the way, okay, how they might help customers or um, when enterprise customers approaching them to fix some problem. Um, also, the nice thing is that we are trying to uh, um, provide four different architectures. So we have basically x86-64, ARM-64, we have S390, and we have PowerPC. Um, so just to keep in mind that when you try to um, submit packages, by the way, we have a workshop tomorrow where I go into detail how to submit packages to package up, but it should work for all architectures. It's nice, but it doesn't have to. There are a lot of packages in package hub that are only available for x86-64 for different reasons. One reason can be that it's not fixed, for example, for S390 or it was just submitted for one architecture. So we need some community work there as well. Um, the other nice thing is that it's or we're trying to be as open as possible so basically everyone can just submit packages there. The package maintainers, developers or even enterprise customers. So that basically the enterprise customer is not only a consumer but he is only a, or, or also a contributor to basically um, the product he is using. So um, we, are we are hard working on getting more package into package up, and um, therefore we are how it is working currently is like an opt-in. So that means that if you want to see a package in package up or someone else need to actively submit this package. But in the future, we are also thinking of like, okay, why not just moving the delta I showed basically from OpenSUSE to SLES. But of course, this needs to be discussed with the maintainers and so on, because I'm not sure if this is something that everyone is um, um, would like to do. So we want to also create a wish list that basically you are able to, okay, if you're not a packager or a maintainer and you don't know how to use OBS at all, but you're interested in some specific open source package, you can just um, send your wishes to, to the community and someone hopefully will pick it up and just put that package in for you. And one, another one uh, big goal is to integrate more with OpenQA. Because currently it is, um, you can't be really sure that the package has some problems in runtime. So it might build fine, but it might fail at a certain place when you install it and you run it. So we are working on uh, the OpenQA integration. Um, we are also working on a community support platform, which is basically, um, it can be a forum or also a platform we can facilitate, which is already there, to build up a community. For example, I don't know if you are aware of the IBM Linux One community. Who is? There's one, okay, great. Because this is like, they are doing basically something similar, or at least they're trying to achieve that. It's a IBM community basically around the mainframe. So for all of you who think mainframe is dead, it isn't. <laughs> it's, still, it's still there. So they are trying to bring open source packages, Linux packages to the mainframe and create a community around that. And this is something uh, we are investigating as well, like combining the efforts 
and building up such a community in a, in a more, in a wider way. Um, because the problem they did it is that basically they um, told the customers how to compile the open source software on the system and install it. And that breaks or might break the supportability of a SLES system. And it's quite important to understand that the software should not, the additional software should not break your system or your stability. So um, that's why we are um, really taking care of like that no kernel module is getting into package hub and so on. So, but what are the advantages for the developers and the community and the maintainers? I mean, because currently it more sounds like, okay, the enterprise customers are consuming. But on the other hand, it's also the possibility for every developer who is basically creating great open source software to use SUSE's delivery channel to reach out to enterprise users and customers. So they can use Package Hub basically as a delivery channel. So probably you might think about that. And of course, Package Hub is free. So that means that every SUSE Linux Enterprise Server customer can just add Package Hub. It's like an extension and can uh, use the software there. So we have all um, also like free activation codes for x86 and Raspberry Pi ARM slash 12 SP2. So if you want to have some, just come after the talk and I will give it to you. I have it in this box. So you can try at least. Um, you get a free subscription for one year with uh, all updates but without any support. And you can try Package Hub on your SLES system. I was quite quick. Are there any questions? Yeah, there's one. Do we have a way of giving um, long-term contributors a long-term SLES license so they can continue to test the packages they're putting the package up? Because say I wasn't a SUSE employee and I was submitting packages into Package Hub and someone raises a bug on that, I as a community member have no way of testing, verifying that bug. Well, this is something that we have to discuss in detail, but it, 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 it should be possible that you basically get a... Ah, there is Scott. He's probably answering. So that's something we don't have set up programmatically yet, but it's something we're looking into. As a first step, like Wolfgang said, today and tomorrow, um, and even Sunday, I think we'll have some. We have some one-year activation cards. Um, so you can get a cop. You can use this to register for a, a SLES distribution and get all the updates for free for one year. Um, if anyone is using that for a year and then the year runs out and they're a contributor to the package hub, they could at simply contact us and we will find a way to get you another year of support. That's something we really want to be able to do is um, help the any contributors to be able to get free access to the SLES bits as they're contributing and testing and supporting that. Okay, any other questions? Okay, three. Um, are there any plans to add applications such as Python pip, which would allow the customer to add in even more uh, applications through Python? Well, it depends. I mean, why not? I mean, if if it's it, it, it if it's for example on leap, why not? We can do that. If it does not break any other dependencies or something, but this is definitely something we can just look into that. I think there were two in the back. 
Hey, uh, I'd like to ask about how, how do you decide on the priority of which packages will you get into package up from Leap? Is it like random or uh, is there some schema behind that which goes first uh, when you're filling the gap between Leap and... So currently it's alphabetical. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 no. no, currently it's the way that basically, as I told before, it's like an opt-in. So that basically if you submit a package there, it usually gets in. And uh, for the future, I mean, it can be different. So, but currently the situation is just to submit a package there and it should get in as long as it's also in factory. Oh, okay. I mean, the other thing is that usually if there are security fixes, they get, they should get in very fast or very quickly. But despite that, just submit. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. That. So we do, I just wanted to add to answer his question, we are prioritizing based on requests. So we get customer requests for certain packages and when we get those coming in we work with the maintainers that are maintaining the packages for OpenSUSE to see if they're willing to, to contribute them to the package shop. So that's one way we're kind of prioritizing. The wish list that he talked about would be another way if we could have a way for users to say, hey, this package is not there, I'd like to see it then we have some input on what the customers or users are looking for, and we could prioritize that way. I maintain a package in OpenSUSE, uh, which is right now in the um, op, um, legacy module of SLES, the Cisco uh, And my question is, what is what have, what do I have to do to uh, put Cisco uh, in package hub? Do I have to wait until uh, uh, legacy is phased out in October, or I can do it now? Well, the thing is that we already had the case that uh, software were just pulled out from a module and put into package hub. So, for example, Docker Compose is just one example. So. Um, this is something usually, according to the policy, you would just wait because it conflicts with the module. But this is something we have to, we, we might talk about in detail. Okay. So if you want to, we can just afterwards then just talk about that. Because that implies also like there's less people inside SUSE, so we have to coordinate that if it's possible to just pull that package before and um, then we would be able to just put it in package up. Okay, thank you. Okay, here's another question. Can we submit um, leap packages into package up? Because I maintain several packages where I have a different version in factory and in leap, and the leap version is probably more appropriate than the factory one. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Um, so what's the update policy? Let's, let's say you have a package in package have already and you want to give it a new version. How does that look like? So basically you branch the package and just submit the new version, but to make sure that the new version also gets to factory. So basically we have also all the factory first policy. Okay. So if there are no more questions, I will just end the talk. And don't forget, if you want to have some activation codes, just come to me and I will give it to you. We also have the evaluation kit for SP2 as DVD, if you like to use DVD. Okay, thank you very much.